Hello YouTube, welcome to Bob's World. This is Bob, your host, and I am gonna be taking you through a couple of books that I picked up uh, when we went on our trip down to Tennessee. I uh, had gone to another shop that was a lot closer to my, um, kind of to the resort we were staying at. And uh, so I'm gonna bring out some books from that and also some collectibles I picked up while I was there. Uh, I don't remember this shop being there the last time we were at. Now we go to this resort quite often. And uh, I don't recall this shop being there before. I remember that there was another shop that wasn't too far away. Uh, but it, well, it was actually, it was about an hour away. So I didn't want to go that route again. It's not really on the way in any way. So, so when I looked up just by chance, now we probably hadn't been to this resort in a couple of years because all the stuff going on. So um, when I looked up comic shops in the area, I was really shocked to see that this one was there. So yeah, way to go. You gotta love it when they spring up like that. It was a small shop, uh, very small. Looked like he had some modern books, but more like, more like stuff that was coming in, people selling him stuff. So there were some modern books, but they were kind of random. Uh, he had he had quite a bit of slabs actually. Uh, the prices were a little bit a little bit high, but he seemed to be able to work with you some, and some prices were just really like head scratchers. Uh, so I don't know what this guy was using to, to price his books. Now, me personally, I, I like when I go to a shop to, to try and figure out what they're using to price their books. I, I really couldn't gauge this guy at all. Uh, some people use internet shop prices. Some people use eBay. Some people use, you know, Overstreet Price Guide. And this guy just seemed to be winging it. So <laughs> like he'd look at something and be like, yeah, I think it's worth this. Uh, and sometimes I felt like he was very fair in that regard. And then sometimes it was just way out of, way out of line and some things were underpriced. So it's a crap shoot. It was a crap shoot when you go in there. Uh, so enter at your own risk and good luck. Uh, know what you're there to buy. Know, know what you're looking for and you'll be fine. So anyway, uh, this shop was in uh, Crossville, ten uh, yeah, Crossville, Tennessee, where we were staying at. So uh, let's go ahead and make me small and get to the hall. Yo! Oh, there's my hand all creeping in there again. What's he doing? Arr! All right. So uh, first off, in his dollar bin, I found a book that is, you don't see very often. It's it's an Elseworlds title. And if I see an Elseworlds title in a, in a dollar bin, I pick it up. Not just for myself, but I know that a lot of people out there collect Elseworlds titles by DC. And they just don't pop up that often. You don't see them in the wild. This one was in really good shape. It was funny because almost every bag and board, if it even had a board... Uh, in the shop was nasty and I mean I mean nasty like you get the fuzzy fingers when you touch them you know uh, but the comics inside were all in really good shape so you know go figure uh, so first up we have Catwoman Guardian of Gotham Elseworlds title by DC and this one is by the great Jim Balint my favorite Catwoman artist uh, and of course, if you can imagine what the Elseworlds title being in play, uh, we're dealing with an evil Batman and a completely heroic uh, Catwoman. Look at that. Isn't that great? Heck yeah. Jim Balant bringing the heat as usual to his Catwoman. Like Gordon's looking good. And then I don't know what happened to this lady. But if the police come to me for questioning, I might have to think of something. Oh, she's got a batarang stuck in her. I just now noticed that. So we know who the sinister, dastardly deed was done by right there. Batman with the evil eyes. The old evil eye Batman. So this is number two, I believe. This is book two of a two book set. So a little graphic novel kind of thing. And there's the other book. Good luck finding it. It pops up every now and then, but I don't want to pay 10 or 15 bucks for that book. I'd like to find it again for a dollar. That would be really awesome. But uh, for Jim Bale and Art, I probably would. And it's Jim Bale and Art um, throughout. So I think, yeah. So Jim Bale and Art throughout is pretty good. Um, and I just flipped through it. I didn't want to read the whole story because I haven't read book one. So I just, you ever do that? You get like a book later in the run. You just go, doo, doo, doo. all right, looks good, looks good, looks good. And you back away. So that's what I did with this one. All right. Next up, I got a book that I've been after for a long time. Isn't it funny how that happens? When you go to a random shop and you're like, wow, I've been looking for this book forever. Uh, I've had an opportunity to buy it before, but again, prices are more than I wanted to pay. And it's Ghost Rider number 50. And this has the first, I believe, team up of the original Western Ghost Rider 
and the modern uh, or if Bronze Age, if you will, uh, Ghost Rider from Marvel. So as you know, the original Ghost Rider, he was from Tim Holt, uh, Western Comics. And uh, when I think Dick Ayers was was his main uh, creator or a heavy drawer participant of it. And when he kind of went away and the property kind of got lost in limbo, so Marvel, when they created their Ghost Rider, uh, they already had the rights to Ghost Rider also, and they created this Ghost Rider instead. And with that Ghost Rider, of course, he stole the name, basically. So th when they introduced uh, this Ghost Rider, they called him for a time Knight Rider. Uh, and then that, I think that was the one that had some connotation maybe with some unsavory groups out there, uh, dressed all in white, if you will. So they ditched that name and they went with Phantom Rider later on for reprints. So I think if my memory serves, that's correct, or it might be the reverse of that. So you guys put in the comments below, if you know better than me, welcome to it. Uh, but here we have Ghost Rider number 50. I've been looking for this for a while because I'm a fan of both characters. And their first team up had to have it super psyched about that. And then also we have Ghost Rider number 56 he had as well, which is another appearance. I think uh, the reemergence of Ghost Rider again uh, with the original Ghost Rider in tow. So there you go. So I was able to pick up number 50 and number 56. Very pleased with that. And then I overpaid for this book. Again, I didn't know how much... I should pay for this book. It's not a book I was after. I just saw it. It looked like it needed rescuing. So I gave a few bucks, bucks, but it turns out that's all it was worth. And it has like a bunch of damage. But uh, here is Thor 232. I just thought that cover was cool. Uh, you know, it's not all about picking up keys and stuff like that. Sometimes it's about picking up a nice solid run. And sometimes it's about just having this, this super coolness uh, factor. Uh, with Thor getting his hammer uh, shot at and you got Loki in the background uh, just good stuff of course I had just finished watching the Loki show so I mean that was like in my mind so when I saw that I was like I need to pick that up so also this guy had a collection of pop figures that were out of box so I picked up Carmen San Diego so if anyone ever asked the eternal question, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Look no further than Bub's world. That's where she's been hiding all these years. Look at that. Now my wife dressed up in cosplay as Carmen San Diego. I can't decide if that's my favorite cosplay of hers, but it she looked perfect. And uh, people, it was funny. I was dressed up, she was dressed up, my son was dressed up, and my son went as uh, Waldo. And where's Waldo? So the two of them were out there and everybody stopped to take pictures of the cosplay and no one took a picture of me. They all had me hold the camera so that they could get a picture with Carmen San Diego and Waldo, uh, citing that they found them both. And that was kind of the, the idea, of course, who masterminded all that, hey, but you don't get any credit on that front, you know? <laughs> so, uh, continuing with the snafus, uh, but I was very happy to have that just a few bucks for that. Well worth it to me. Um, so I've been collecting these Marvel Secret Wars figures that I had when I was a kid. Uh, technically, my brother had more of them than I did, but it was one of those toys that I never even asked to play with. I just took them and played with them and got in trouble for it later, didn't care. Uh, so I had a pretty good collection of them myself, and he had a much larger collection. And I'm trying to rebuild them. They don't have to be new in box. I'm taking loose figures. I'm picking up parts whenever I see them so I can recreate everything. And so I knew I was missing a couple of figures from the line. I couldn't remember which ones I was missing. I never wrote it down. Uh, so anyway, I went to the shop and he had four of them inside of a bag and he wanted, you know, a certain price and, and in the bag had a Wolverine. Now I knew I had at least one Wolverine, one really good one because my wife had got it for me. So I may have had two Wolverines, but I knew I at least had one. So I said, you know what? I don't need that. Uh, just take that one out and can you lower the price? So we worked on it and we came to an agreement. So I bought these three Secret Wars figures. So I got Iron Man uh, only to come home and discover that I already had Iron Man. And this one is in better condition other than the helmet is scraped and mine wasn't. But the rest of the paint is in better condition. And the chest has like some kind of crud or something going on there. It looks like somebody held a fire to it, honestly. But he looks pretty cool. So 
I'm happy with him, even though I didn't need him. I've got doubles, but maybe I can hold these for like trade bait. So if anybody has the ones that I'm missing, I'll be like, hey, do I have what you're missing? You know, it's like old fashioned trading cards. And uh, here is Magneto in his stylish fire orange. I know you guys are really digging that. Look at that. You guys are loving that. <laughs> fire orange Magneto only to come home and realize I also had him. Didn't need him and he's perfect here and my copy was perfect as well. But the one that I knew I didn't have when I got to the shop, Kang the Conqueror. And again, this was just after coming off the Loki series. So the price of this figure had gone up some. So I was glad to snag one. And I knew, and I know he's missing his like chest plate and his other accessories as they all are. But uh, he had like some sort of rubbery kind of suit clothes going on there. And that's all gone. Uh, but anyway, I picked him up, super glad to have him. I could put him in a suit or something and he would look fine. Um, so there he is, very cool. Uh, only to come home and realize I had him too. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I was convinced that I didn't have him. I would have sworn a Bible. I would have, you know, offered up anything in my collection. I was that convinced that I did not have that figure. Only to come home, dig through the ones I had and find out I already had it. So. That kind of stuff happens when you're on vacation. And I was checking out and there were two things on the counter that I just couldn't pass up. And the first one, and my wife was really jazzed about this, is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Check that out. Come on, you can do it. Oh, look at that. All right, we'll have to do the old fashioned here. Look at that. Ant-Man and the Wasp from, I assume the movie costume really, but it's always hard to tell. Look at that. Very cool. And comes in a little acrylic stand. About stole this from the poor guy. Uh, it was super cheap. It went, he gave it to me way cheaper than apparently what it sells for online. I hadn't, I'm not like I looked it up or anything, but apparently it, it, it's, you know, goes for way more than I spent on it. I had no idea. I saw it. I liked it. It was out of box. And I said, I'll give you this for it. He was like, all right, cool. And then on the way out, also I saw, he was laughing about this, these trading cards he had just picked up and, and one fell out and it was Alf. And I'm like, well, I'm a big Alf fan. I'll pick that up. And uh, I said, how much for that? And I think he said a quarter or 50 cents or something, but then it just ended up being free. So it's in rough shape. Shumway, which is his original name, right? Gordon Shumway. I was too small to play quarterback. So they made me a one eighth back. Har har. And then it's got some cool Alf stats, uh, whatever. Mac, uh, Randolph Shumway was one of the few Macmanians, uh, whatever. We're not going to go through all that, but that's what it was. So you guys can pause that and read it at your leisure or not. There it is. All right. Good luck with that. So there you go. That was my little haul from uh, Crossville, Tennessee, completely uh, shocked that they had a shop at all and they had a ton of statues and action figures I mean for a tiny little shop they really packed it in and everything looked really good and I was really I was really impressed with it honestly and I'm excited that next time we go since it's the kind of shop that looks like he's just buying and selling there's no kind of rhyme or reason to it I, I kind of feel like if I brought him in a box of comics he'd be like yeah I'll take him nobody else is buying that stuff in the area so, uh, you know, so then that stuff ends up on the floor and then you just take your pick. He had some stuff that was signed without COAs and stuff like that. He was kind of trying to push on me, but, but that's all in good fun. And if I didn't have a lot of those signatures already, maybe I would have considered it. So, so cool deal, cool shop and you know, fun toys to play with. So that's it. That's the haul. Uh, I say, um, we should, oh, so close. Look, Carmen about about jumped off. Uh, so everyone remember to read a comic and don't apologize for the glare. Catch you next time. Bye bye.